Hey Jackson, what are you doing? Coloring. You coloring? They have these cute little books at the Daddy. gift shop. They weren't actually that bad either, but they're Emily Green. Hold on, let me show them how this works. And then what after they that? color, you can just erase it. What's your version, Mama? Because mm -hmm. we're here for Jackson's EEG, but we have to wait an hour and a half because they had an emergency. So we went to the gift shop to find some more things for him to do. Hold on, Mommy that one's wet. Here, do this one. What's your color? Yeah, can you color it? Where's that? Where's that, And so, Mom? since we had to wait Where's so that, long, Mom? you figured we'd get... That? That's a tow truck. Figured we'd get something yeah. for him to do. Huh, buddy? Yeah. You're a good okay, color. Okay. Let's turn that and make sure your name doesn't show. Very good. Hey, you Mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll put it in the garbage when we're done. Where's the garbage go? <clears throat> it's over there. It's over there? Yeah. Do you want Mama to color with you? Yeah. Okay. What? I just picked one and choose it. Okay. So, a Hi guys. So I'm just gonna kind of tell you what happened today. So, um, Trevor or Jackson, um, we got up this morning and I got a call from the doctor saying he wanted us to have the EEG EEG done today. So um, he said to go ahead and call over to the Children's Hospital and get it scheduled. So I called over there and they said August 26th they'd get us in. So um, so well, that's kind of a ways away. So they called to the doctor to see if he wanted us in sooner or not and he wanted us in like today. So they called me right back and said, well, just come in right now if you can. So we came in and then when we got there they had an emergency. So we had to wait an hour and a half, which is totally fine and understandable. So we went to the gift shop and we got some things for Jackson and then he was getting kind of bored after a while so we went ahead to the cafeteria and neither of us were really hungry but you know, what do you do? So we got some food over at the cafeteria and ate and while we were eating we got a call that we were, they were ready for us. So we went in and I'm basically just letting you know that if you guys ever have to have any of your kids have an EEG, you kind of know what to expect. So they called us in and um, we went into the, the small room and it had a bed in there and a computer and some things like that and then a whole bunch of wires and a ton of tape and then these little electrode things on the end of the wires. So when we went in they said do not let him nap before he gets there and don't, oh, don't put anything in his hair. They wanted his hair clean and dry. So when they had him lay down and they were explaining how I was going to hold his head and all these kind of things, but he did just fine without me having to hold him down, so <laughs> there was no need for me to hold him. Um, then they marked his head with a marker in like different spots like here, here, and here, and then all the way back, and then some on the sides, and then some on the chest. And then what they did, they had this um, blue goopy cream and white cream. And the blue was more like of an adhesive, sandy texture type stuff. And then the white was more like just a cream and it was like a glue, I guess. So on each of those spots that they marked on his head, they put the gritty stuff down and then the goopy stuff and then the electrode and then a piece of tape. And then once all the electrodes were on his head, they went ahead and did... Um, like a gauze wrap around his chin and around his head just to hold everything in place and they had a rolled up towel for him to lay his head on like the back of his neck because they didn't want any parts of his head touching pillows or things like that to bump electrodes and whatnot. So then they just kind of had him let me sit there and read him a book for a little bit and they videotaped him while it was happening so there's a camera connected to the stand um, aimed towards the bed and they just had him on video the whole time. So they were recording whatever and she was jotting down notes and whatever was going on. And then she turned on some music and turned the lights off and said, okay, have him take a nap. And I'm like, what? How do I force him to take a nap here? Like, that's, he doesn't go to sleep very easy. She goes, just try the best you can. And he threw a huge fit. Um, he did not want to take a nap and he was doing those he has breath holding spells, not enough to make him pass out, but enough to make him turn purple. 
So he was doing that, and she said she could actually see it on his brain activity that he was holding his breath. And then he finally calmed down. I think it took about five minutes for him to finally calm down. And they let me lay in the bed with him and kind of cuddle him and everything. And he ended up falling asleep. And they just sat there and did the same thing, took some notes and kind of recorded his brain activity while he was sleeping, maybe for 10, 15 minutes. And then they said, go ahead and wake him up. And he was really, really hard to wake up because um, he had only been sleeping for like 15 minutes. It's not much. So he was in a deep sleep. So they had me take a washcloth and rub it on his face and kind of tickle him to get him to wake up because he wasn't waking up for nothing. And then after that, with the lights still off, they had um, a bar. It was probably about like that long and it was strobe lights and they put it in front of his face and then had him watch a strobe light for a little while. And in the beginning he was laughing and giggling and thought it was all funny and then after a while he said, you're hurting my eyes. Shut it off. Shut it off. Um, he didn't have any seizure activity while we were hooked up to the machine, so I'm not sure how that all works. But, um, yeah, so she said she was going to send it over to the neurologist on staff there that day and that he would go through it within an hour and then my, or his pediatrician would then have to go over those results and then the pediatrician would call me. Well, the pediatrician only works half days today, so we have to wait till tomorrow to get the results back. Um... And then once everything was said and done, they started taking the electrodes off. And the worst part of it really was just getting him to take a nap. And then in the back of his head where his hair is a little bit longer, some of that glue stuff that stuck to his hair, and they kind of had to just yank him out a little bit. And he kind of cried a little bit there. But it was real quick and done and easy, and it wasn't bad at all. So um, that's kind of how it went and he did really really good and then when we were all done they brought in this treasure box and he picked out a little race car to take home and yeah it was pretty simple I wasn't sure what to expect and so now I know and if you guys have to have one or if your kids have to have one now you know what to expect too it's nothing invasive it's nothing major it's just you know I'm sure as an adult it would be totally fine because you just get to lay there and relax for a while take a nap or whatever um but yeah I guess the reason why they wanted him to have a nap was because for a three-year-old it's impossible to make them sit perfectly still and quiet and the only way to do that is to have them take a nap I'm sure as an adult they would just tell you to lay still and quiet and not move so all in all he did great um we'll see once what the doctor says tomorrow and go from there uh, I do know the doctor said most likely either way, no matter what the results are, we're going to do an MRI afterwards. So he said if there's something that gets picked up on the EEG, it's going to tell them what part of the brain these things are happening in, and then they can do an MRI and more focus in on that specific area. He said if nothing shows up on the EEG, they still want to do an MRI to figure out exactly what's going on um, and to make sure that he's not doing any damage with the head banging that he does. Um, in the in the meantime, Chris doesn't feel comfortable having him sleep in the crib or in his room alone because he will bang his head on the walls and on the crib and on the door and whatever. So we are co-sleeping currently again, uh, which it's fine. I mean, I, I enjoy not having him in there now, but um, it's fine. So nap time and bedtime, he we just lay down with him and he goes to sleep fine. So yeah, that's kind of how it went today. Um, I do have a picture on my Facebook of him with his thing on. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to check it out, go ahead and do that, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.